Dude, this demon is sucking your soul sucking out. Sucking your soul out. And twisting okay? it into something. That Glock Glock, that Ghost Ghost <laughs> 9000. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 46 of A Podcast. Um, today's going to be a little spooky and scary episode. We're talking about goose and goblins. Shit. shit. Jared, the, not. Are you No, dude? Jared. Fuck. Jared. Come on. Oh, the spooky, the spooky episode. Dude, you could. I hit the worst <laughs> button to start this off. I literally, Zach goes, it's going to be spooky. <laughs> and we, we practiced before this. That's what makes me irate. Nice word. It's my word of the day. Uh, um, so it's we're going to talk about paranormal activity that we've experienced in our lives and that it, we've experienced on the internet through reading. Zach could not believe in this less. I'm pretending today, though. <laughs> you could say yeah. I'm possessed. Ooh, Jared, hit me some intro music. Indy, don't say a word during the intro music. I was just going to say it right at the end. I, I know she is. I can see it in Zach. her face. Ah! <laughs> Common word here in bed. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Dropouts. Hit him with the what's up, B-words. Ew. What? What's up, B-words? Welcome back to Dropouts, episode 46. Today, we're going to be talking about spooky, scary skeletons. Spooky, scary skeletons yeah, is, and shivers up your spine. spine. As you guys know, it's October, so um, we're approaching Halloween. Yeah, what? unlike normal people, like to have a Mother's Wait. Day podcast. Wait, oh, they, oh, this is supposed to be our Mother's Day podcast. This is supposed to be our Mother's Day podcast. Where are mothers supposed to be on this yeah. podcast? Why did we not do that? Did we all just forget? I think we all just forgot, and Whoa. it just kind of. Well, okay. Here's the thing. I can get my mom here soon. I can get I, my mom here right now. I knew, or my like my mom told me that she had to reschedule, so I knew that, but or that she couldn't come this week because she was out of town. Well, traveling. hell, Jared, haven't we been like prefacing this for? Yeah, why Since wouldn't you start? just let us know and we would have brought our moms? I thought we... We got to fly out 64 of your moms out here. It's like, jeez, <laughs> all, all of our budget would have went away if we yeah, had to bring all of his moms out here. I thought I thought we had I thought we just abandoned the idea. Well, I don't remember the idea being brought back up, and I never know when Mother's Day is. I think... I honestly thought it was in June. That's Father's Day. I thought it was in September. Where did you get that? I think Father's Day is in September. No, Father's Day is in June. Father's Day is the... I remember celebrating something in my September. My father's birthday is in September. No. Zach's birthday is in September. No. Labor Day is in September. Beyonce's no. birthday is the same day as mine in September. No, none of these are ringing a bell. None of these are ringing a bell? No. All right, Jared. How about you dive in into our first spooky story? Uh, I don't know. Okay, so... Recently, we've been watching. I'm already scared. Go ahead. A lot of. Well, okay. It's not really. It's not like a scary story. Jared, I wanted scary, terrifying, not be able to sleep, baby boy. Well, yeah, we've been watching a lot of American horror stories. So this is what's kind of like gotten us into the vibe recently. It's like we've been watching because I had never seen it before. We've been watching. Even though we worked on it. Even though I worked on it. uh, We've been watching a lot of American horror story. We went to uh, the separation screening and then the trailer for The Conjuring 3 came out no i don't is that I, that movie where they I like i haven't seen it where they clap you i haven't, haven't seen the new trailer you haven't seen it it's called no. it's called the conjuring the devil made me do it um, wait i would love to watch it okay can we can we, can we watch the trailer <laughs> like, or we write this, well we'd get copyrighted oh. in a heartbeat um but do you do you want to watch it just to, i can cut it out and then sure. okay we'll be right back no we won't we're right here again with the power of editing, Jared. Literally not even a half a second we were gone. Yeah! That looks sick! Want to know something really exciting? No. What? The first audition I ever did in America was for The Conjuring 2. First of all, it's Amarika. If you were in that movie, I don't think I could be friends with you. I got a callback. I think I got like two callbacks on it. That's impressive. Mm-hmm. Then they Do you think you're going to get it? <laughs> <laughs> the like, Dude, that's so exciting. Movie. The Conjuring... Conjuring's Conjuring, whatever. The Conjuring series. The series, that's like one of my favorite scary movie series. So I'm so excited that they're coming out with a third. That one looks good. I love the, uh, so the uh, the reason I actually like the Conjuring series is because they're it's like, on. it's based on true events. And um, especially this one. So it's like a real, li- it's a obviously like from the trailer, they took a lot of creative liberties because they have to make it like entertaining for a movie, but it's directed by James Wan again. And I'm so excited because he's directed every, every, all the other series the conjuring series but um basically so the the real case was uh this guy and i love some of the the actual factual things that they had that's why i think super exciting when yeah. they like actually incorporate because well all the conjurings are based off of 
true events. They're yeah, exaggerated, the, the but Warren. they're the baseline of them all are all based off of Ed and Lorraine Warren's like, case files. Yeah, and so um, basically, Arnie Johnson, you know, uh, committed murder, and then he their their testimony in court. He was the first person to ever like the first court case ever recorded to. Uh, say, like, not guilty by demonic possession. Well, yeah, I'd say that, right? too, if I didn't want to go to prison. Well, but here's here's, here's the, the thing. Here's the thing. Okay, so the, the story behind it. Do you it, seriously not believe in demons or possession? No. And I love in the in the... In the trailer, he says he's like the every time a witness swears in, the court accepts the uh, the existence of God, right? I think it's time they accept the existence of the. Devil. Oh, dude, that was a real that was a real quote. When the that, editor found that in the like in the tra- in the movie for the trailer, he's like, "Bingo, split that, add that right in." But here's the thing: that was a real quote that Ed Warren said in court. You it's know, true. when he was testifying, because it's true. Like you swear in on the Bible, so it's like if they believe in God, why wouldn't they believe in? You know, the, the, the devil, the devil was Lil Nas X at the trial or no? <laughs> yeah. He came in on a pole oh, and nice. just slid right into He's the, our the lawyer. Say, Y'all, it exists. It exists. I shook ass on it. <laughs> but, um, so basically, so that got the, taken down for, I think a week. Did it really? Yeah. It got taken down and removed from all spot, all streaming platforms. Why? I have no idea, but it got put back up eventually. Yeah. But, but still, like, it was taken out from everything for a week. That's also says a lot about I guess it's private companies so like they have it's kind of like you know when you walk into a restaurant they said we have the right to refuse anyone it's kind of like they also have the right to not host anybody's content um anyway what so if we do our own horror movie with just like the cameras we have uh-huh. and like it's like we're filming a podcast and then like stuff happens and the camera's already rolling so we catch it all well just that'd like be a, cool. a contained that'd be, thriller it's that'd be like it's um, like paranormal, paranormal activity yeah. we rip off paranormal activity because it made millions as long as we make thousands, that'll be fine. Paranormal podcastivity. <laughs> <laughs> we'll workshop we'll the names, workshop Jerry, the but <laughs> you're on board, right? Um, a lot less smiling needs to happen in the movie. Oh, just because you're going to be scared. Okay, ready? Ah. Nope, Jared. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Jared, okay. Is Jared going to die first in the movie? Let's be honest. Hell yeah. Okay, I'm going to scare you as a Hear gr- me out. Twist. What if I'm the only one that makes it through? I do like the twist, but you just told everyone's going to do it anymore. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be a scary demonic figure. <laughs> so give me a second and then you're gonna give me your best scare okay have this you is your audition seen, have you ever seen leo and satan no but i don't want to recast you <laughs> okay. so work hard on this okay okay ready are we both auditioning yeah you're gonna give me a second okay you're gonna be my casting director right now oh i'm the director yeah, i got you okay ready wait i need to give direction okay direct him well i guess you're the director director's never really in the casting yeah, this is a big role, so I want to make sure. He's oh, he's uh, he's already at network and like. Yeah, yeah, he's, 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 okay, he's, okay, ready? I'm just sitting here. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a simple boo, and then I need you to react like it's the most terrifying thing you've ever seen in your life. Okay, okay, ready? Boo! Ah! <laughs> How was that? Nice, it was a, it was nice. A little fake. Can you okay. stay in frame a little bit? We oh. we we want to see the real terror on your yeah. face. Okay, and stare directly into the camera. You really want to see the audience. Dude, this demon is sucking your soul sucking out. Sucking your soul out. And okay? twisting it into something. That Glock, Glock, that Ghost Ghost <laughs> 9000. Okay? Oh Ready? Uh, watch watch his face for here. Wait, is this a hire for us? Ready? Calm down. Don't laugh. It's a horror movie. Are you bringing it? Boo. I wonder what he would Wait. Oh. Sorry. So sorry action. about that. You didn't say action. Okay. Um, there's no action here. There's This is real life. Ready? Boo. <laughs> No. Yeah. Jared, <laughs> shit. I'm gonna I wonder you. what he would do in an actual audition. I that's the thing. I could only ever audition for comedy movies, and even then, I think I would struggle. To I get love. Them. I'm not the best. At, I mean, I, I'm I'm okay at comedy. I would say, but like, I'm definitely better on. Get the face for it. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> well, yeah. You've got the face for comedy. You know who's one of the funniest people in the world? Ryan Reynolds. Ever heard of him? I'm sure he's had sex before. <laughs> okay. Indy? Okay. Jared, you're now a casting director. Holy hell, did you get re- your <laughs> you did not get the role. <laughs> Holy hell, you did not get the role. And that's okay because your background. You're gonna be a background. Oh, what? Okay, or you can work the camera. Okay. Okay. Cameras are on He's old. Cameras on tripods though, so it doesn't matter. Okay, <laughs> be my casting director here. Ready? All right. I'm gonna say boo. Okay. No action. Because we're already in it. I need you to get me terrified. Ready? <coughs> Wait. To the camera? Yeah, to the camera. Thank you for putting the mic away. I assume you're going to scream. 
Look this way. No, that's weird. I would never be looking. No, but you're not looking at me. I want them to see the reaction. Okay, ready? Well, Jared's casting. So. Yeah, Jared's casting. Three, two. <laughs> no, okay. No worries. Hey, you do have a face for comedy. What the <laughs> fuck? See, it's not a nice comment. <laughs> okay, okay. Rain it in. <laughs> Guys, I'm trying to cast this movie. <laughs> Ready? And three, two, one, boo. <laughs> Carlos, no, no one got murdered in our, our apartment. Our landlord lives right above us, and I can only assume. Actually, that was I a good did, scream, though. Speaking good scream. of, I did, um, you remember Happy Death Day? Yes. Yeah. Remember the movie? Mm -hmm. um, so Happy Death Day to you. Uh, paid a lot of brat actors to do promotion for them. And it was like a whole thing. Like they set up a, it was like literally a mini horror film. You can watch the little short on Oh yeah, I've YouTube. seen it. Have you seen that? The, the, the short? You, my little promo, it's literally a two minute video. No. Oh I've yeah, been, you're casting the movie. Yeah, you're definitely casting Thanks. the movie. Um, um, I've, I've been trying to tell the actual story of The oh, Conjuring 3 okay, okay. for well, like five minutes. Regardless, watch it later. I've, uh, play someone who's getting haunted by the baby in it. You know the, how he wears the scary baby mask. <laughs> I like to think that you're just getting haunted, haunted by, by the baby. baby. <laughs> like the baby. baby. He's just um, like, aha, <laughs> y'all her rock star. <laughs> um. Anyway, so I pull up. <laughs> Sorry. They used my scream in a lot of the promo for Happy Death Day. Oh, did, did, you, so, did so they do so that thing screen. where that like they have it like at the final end where it like cuts it's to the, the title and, goes, and then it echoes <laughs> out. I could already see it. I, I knew from the scream that she yeah. had in here. Yep. Yeah, it was actually really good. I had to scream so many times that I lost my voice the next day. And I had to call. Uh, I called in because I had shooting for Chicken Girls the next day. And I had to be like, hey, guys. And they were like. It sound like, hey, oh, did shit. you just smoke 12 packs? They're like, hey, you good? I was like, well, I screamed a lot yesterday on set. And this is how I sound now. And they're like. Oh, and take I a day really off. I really want chocolate. And I really want chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. Someone get me a bag of cigarettes and some chocolate. Are you my grandma? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Okay, so the actual story. So it starts off, there is this little kid. His name is uh, David um, uh, Glatzel, right? <laughs> what a last name. Did right? he die? No. he's oh. So he's 11 Shame. years old, and he's going through a really tough time. Like, what? Well, because he's possessed, but he's going like, through a, <laughs> dude, I can't through get, a real tough time. This kid can't get his homework done. Can't get a day to prom and is possessed by the devil himself. But, but he's <laughs> so, having a real, difficult a real time tough here. week. So like he's going through it, like all these things, like he's like, he's, he's acting animalistic and he's like hallucinating. Like this, this, he calls it the beast man where it's like this, like really tall, slender figure that has like black eyes and like animal features like horns and hooves and stuff and um all these things and then um basically and he's he's like speaking in tongues you know and so they they which bring is, in what just a small thing which is interesting because in the bible um lucifer was the most beautiful angel mm -hmm. i know but is he, he was a fallen or he wasn't a fallen angel was he, he no well he is the fallen angel well, See, I sick title what the fallen angel dude his instagram handle fire <laughs> well question what i've heard two stories about lucifer and you'd probably you went to church like every day of your damn life so you might be able to i can't say church and damn in the same probably sentence probably not but you Rega did regardless you know a lot about the bible so but I don't say, you i won't say no that much i just but like you can tell me this is basic bible knowledge okay you know basic bible knowledge we'll, we'll see I've heard two stories about the devil. One, that he's a fallen angel. Two. He's your ex-boyfriend. <laughs> that too. That was funny. Three, um, God put Lucifer in charge of hell and was like, you're, you, you've been put in charge of hell. Like you have to run this now. And he was really pissed off at God for that. He was like, why did I get? Why did I get like? I could be completely wrong. I thought it was he um, was jealous of God and like what he was doing, and he wanted to be like ruler he, or something. Yeah, something to that effect. I'm very just paraphrasing. And then the people that followed him, um, they all just went, got cast out, got of cast out of heaven. And then I don't know if he's even the ruler of hell. Like I don't think that's the thing. I think he was like cast to hell, and like he has to go down like this pit for a thousand years. It's there's a lot to it. I don't remember it fully. So if I'm Wrong, I'm wrong. Hold on, now I'm curious. No, there's something where like he's cast in a pit for maybe a thousand years and he's just constantly falling. That's so sad. 
<laughs> I, I like this. I looked up. Are you <laughs> siding with the devil? <laughs> I, I looked up the. She's the, never found empathy <gasps> in her entire life. Oh, interesting. So the the Bible doesn't actually describe the devil in detail, right? Um, what does? Dante, like Dante's Inferno. And yeah, that's what. In like, his poem, he describes. What's Dante's Inferno? That's where. That's where everyone famous. got the depiction of. Yeah, he's he portrays the devil as a grotesque winged creature with three faces, each chewing on a devious sinner, whose wings blew freezing cold winds throughout hell's domain. And one of them is um, Judas. The other one is I forgot. I don't know. It doesn't go into that. Um, all right, it doesn't really say how much. My question is because Every, everybody thinks he sorry, he's fallen because there's a line in the Bible that says, "How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down from to the ground which did weaken the nation?" That sounds like a sick Nickelback song. How art thou fallen from heaven? <laughs> Yeah, that's not pretty good. How the fuck do we, should we start a Creed cover band? <laughs> well, I think we should be Creed too. <laughs> Creed Bratton. Andy, wait, 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 wait. Andy worked on a movie with Creed Bratton called Hero Mode. Oh my god, you know I really just found that out. What? He was in the movie. We watched the movie. <laughs> you have been saying that since I met you. Not Creed. No, you said the people from The Office were in that show. You didn't know which one it was. I hadn't seen The Office when I worked on the movie. Are you oh my joking? God. Man, this this uh, paranormal podcast is going so far I'm off I'm so the sorry, rails. guys. We're going off the rails right now. We're going to get into the goose and goblins Wait, very soon. I only just put two and two together. I mean, I knew I was in a movie with people from The Office, but when I shot the movie, I hadn't seen The Office yet. So I didn't know which one was from The Office. I knew it wasn't Mira Sorvino. I knew it wasn't Sean Astin. I knew it wasn't Bobby Lee or Eric Griffin. And so I was like, this only leaves a couple more, but I never had any scenes with him. And then I started watching The Office, and then I was reading the movie poster today. It said Creed, and I was like, huh? Oh, I know, I know a guy named And then Creed. I put two and two together. That a girl. Proud of you. Thank you. So, so this little boy <laughs> gets possessed, right? And like he's so oh, like I forgot what he's, we're about he's speaking in tongues. He's having these hallucinations where he's like seeing this beast man. And then like during the night, like he'll get scratches and bruises on him, like just out of nowhere. And like he always feels like someone's choking him, you know? Oh, kinky. And um, so then they bring in a priest to bless the house. And then that only pissed off the beast man, according mm -hmm. to the kid. And then so Possessions then, have to be dealt very carefully. Do you know that from firsthand experience? What was yes, that from? <laughs> I am currently possessed. So then they bring in Ed and Lorraine, and they bring <laughs> the in homies. the homies. <laughs> they, and then they bring in a couple of, like priests that they know are really good. They at squatted exercise. up with like Basically. six priests. Yeah, they're like they're like, listen, we're gonna <laughs> fucking exercise this kid, you know? Exercise, and that's what it's called. Like the I thought it was an exorcism. It is an exorcism. oh, that's the act of yeah. And so here's the crazy part. When they were exercising him, they you always and one and two is like aerobics. <laughs> That's exactly how they were doing it. Except they counted to forty three because they demanded you always demand the demon's name in an exorcism, and he spit out forty three names of demons that were like possessing him. Bill out, Tom <laughs> out, John out, uh, Kyle. You can stay. So dope. You still got that jewel pod. Um, <laughs> So, anyway, but Chad, so he dude, was, Chad sucks. Dude, we Chad, like who do you dude. even know here, dude? That'd be a funny like. <laughs> you just possessed by a bunch of like frat, frat guys. Know your dude, dude. He doesn't even know, it. dude. I, it's my territory, dude. I love little boys and possessing them. And he came in here, totally stole my steez. <laughs> totally. <laughs> okay, so then, so then, here's where the connection to Arnie Johnson comes in, right? The guy that actually murdered somebody. So Arnie was the fiance of uh, Debbie Glatzel, who is David's older sister, right? And he was there because Debbie wanted him to like see if he could help in any way, right? And so while they were exercising him and like all the stuff was going on, he taunted the, the like the um, Ed even says like in the court case, like he's like, 
Arnie made a fatal mistake where he taunted the demon. And he said, like, take me on, like, leave my, like, little buddy alone. Right? <laughs> that was, like, the quote or something. Leave my little buddy alone. I mean, basically. I mean, you know, it's the 80s. Um, so that was, so then the demons basically transferred from they the said, kid I- to him. They <laughs> said, bet, pull up. Um, and so then from there, like, several months passed by. And he's, like, Arnie's slowly getting worse and worse. Like, he's starting to, like, Reenact the like all the, yeah, like all the things that like David was going through. Um, and then eventually, so, um, uh, what you might call it, Arnie, go Arnie, Debbie, Debbie's nine year old cousin, little Debbie, little lover, <laughs> <laughs> her name's Mary, little <laughs> Mary. Um, and, uh, and then, um, uh, what you might call it, Debbie's employer slash landlord. Um, his name is, uh, Bono something. Um, <laughs> Bono's here? <laughs> Bono. Maybe it's Bono. I don't know. But anyway, they all go out to lunch, right? And then... Chili's, I assume. There's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of there's chilies. a lot of drinking. Maybe the $5 marks, you know. A lot of drinking that ensues. And uh, Bono, Bono, whatever his name is, the landlord slash boss, gets a little handsy with the nine-year-old girl, right? Oh, and dude. Like, he doesn't... I don't think he, like diddled her but like when i what <laughs> I, I like that word yeah I, what i read is that he just like grabbed her and like wouldn't let go and like you know everybody's like dude let go you know whatever and then all of a sudden arnie starts like growl like growling drooling and then just like straight up attacks this man with a knife right like something just completely comes over him and he stabs See, the him. devil was protesting the little nine-year-old I think so, but like, whose side are you on? He he I'm stabs confused. him like four <laughs> or five times, right? And one of them was like really gruesome. I read it, and it was like he stabbed and ripped up from his stomach to the bottom of his heart. <gasps> oh, so for sake. all of I this. I not need you to tell me that. Right, gruesome stuff. And then he, he didn't like mean to he mean literally me. walks out, and they're like, "What the hell just happened?" And then. So, yeah, then they get to the court case, and they were like, you know, Ed has that quote. He's like, the court believes in God, so that it's time they accept the, like, existence of the devil. Um, and then he was the first person to plead that the devil made him do it, you know, and that kind of, like, coined the phrase. I'm going to start using that for everything. Everything. Hey, didn't she? Devil made me do it. Apparently, he likes jugs. And uh, so then the devil kind of... Th- or the devil the court threw that out basically they were like there's not enough like proof that we could like use for this you know and so he was convicted of first degree manslaughter he sir he was sentenced to 10 to 20 years served five of it and then got out when he got out arnie and debbie got married after he, he got was, out after five years from brutally stabbing and murdering someone yeah i feel like you know, a little bit longer would have <laughs> done him some good <laughs> anyway so that was i thought it, that was kind of interesting the story of like behind the, the really new conjuring movie coming out especially since it was like a historic you know court case in the u.s i want when does it come out i think like june 4th or something i know what i'll be watching in chicago do you guys have any spooky scary skeleton stories um, <laughs> do you have any personal experiences? Anytime Indy walks the room, I kind of get a cold shiver up my spine. But um, besides that, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, there it is again. See that stare? Cold. I wasn't even unforgiving. Shut up. Besides, like the two thousands yeah. girl haunting me. I thought you had like a guy that used to visit you in a trench coat. Oh, when did I tell you that? <laughs> anyway. Um, basically what happened was when Indy was little, um, a guy in a trench coat and like a top, like a, like a fedora type hat. Yeah. It wasn't little. It was a, um, used to visit her in her closet. It wasn't a trench coat. It was like a big, it was, he was like 80. Do you just want to explain? I guess so. (laughs) (laughs) Please don't come back. You seem nice. Don't come back though. Listen, it was probably, he was probably just attached. No, really weird. It was just probably just Kevin Wong trying to get I don't know if it was like demonic or like a guy was visiting me or i was experience experiencing sleep paralysis because like i I don't know i'd never experienced it but like from what people have told me that seems like it would be sleep paralysis but but were you in the closet or were you okay here let me tell you the story story. basically um the first cut out where i say because that's an address okay so uh the first place the first apartment i lived in in la um, I lived there for like five years from like 13 to literally before 
like to like 17 or whatever um and or 16 and i my bedroom was my bedroom door wouldn't close correctly because the place was so old it was literally like built in like 60s or 70s (laughs) it was built in like the 60s or the 70s so i had to close my closet door to like jam the door shut so you it would like the door would stay closed i was sleeping and it would happen a lot and it was this man I never saw his face. He was wearing like a, a fedora. It was, he almost looked like an Italian mobster. He was wearing a really big oversized brownish blazer with like huge shoulder pads. And like it was really oversized. I couldn't see his hands. I could see that he was wearing like this matching like pants and like little brown like. So he had good style. I guess. <laughs> like little brown like leather shoes. And he was just standing in the corner of my room. Just like watch me. But I couldn't do anything about it. I could Like I honestly felt like I couldn't. I didn't want to scream or move. I got scared. And, like, he would just stand there. And I'd be like, like, sometimes I would trick myself. And I'd be like, no, it's just whatever's in my closet. I was like, I don't own any hats. I don't own any blazers. Why would there just be a figure there? Like, it would scare the living daylights out of me. He never did anything. He never said anything. He would just stand there. And I was like, sometimes I think it could have been, like, my great-grandpa, oh, like, who oh, passed away. Oh. I haven't seen Is any. He ha- oh, he has his passport? What? How would he get into the U.S.? Shut up. <laughs> Sometimes I think it could have been, like, my great-grandpa, like, paying me a visit, being like, hey, what's up? Like, could have been him from, like, when he was younger. Because apparently when you pass on, you, like, pass on into your best, like, period of time. If that if that makes sense? Yeah, that makes like, sense. Like, you, like, become... So rather than, like, walking the world as, like, a 90-year-old, you, you walk, walk the world, the world as, like, as 25-year-old. As, you know? like, you in your prime, right? Yeah. So I was like, maybe that's him in his prime and maybe he's visiting me, but I also have no idea. It could have been sleep paralysis. I could have been seeing something. I like fully believe in stuff like that, like to the highest extent. So it was like that. Or um, I used to have back in Australia, this is when I was super, super young, like eight or nine. Um, and I like always think it was, it's the creepiest. This is a cr- I promise you, I, can, I promise you when I tell you this, I am not lying about a single thing. This is just, like, what I experience. I don't know. Sometimes it's, like, your mind playing tricks on you because you think so much about it. You start to believe it, if that makes sense. But this was shortly after my great-grandpa had passed away. And, like, we would go visit him all the time and see him all the time and everything, right? I had this wooden um, art piece that an Australian artist had made for me. And it was filled with all these flowers and butterflies and written on each of the wings was, like, a family member that had passed on. So I wrote, like... Aww. Papa Dan, because in like my family, I think uh, butterflies are like your your spirits that like follow you and like whatever. So on the wings, I'd written things and I wrote down Papa Dan because it was the like right after his funeral. And I was like, he's now a spirit. He's passed on. I'm going to write this down. And I was very, very heavily into like God. And I was super, super Catholic. Then I'd pray before bed every single night and like pray on the rosary every single night. I don't know how we got here, but that's what I used to do. So I was praying by my bedside and I, I know I like distinctly remember it was like cold. So all my, my, my door was shut. My windows were shut. There was no way air could get in. My AC is also broken in my room. So that's how I fully like, this is what freaks me out. I remember I was praying and I closed my eyes and I was kneeling by my bedside and I felt a hand on my shoulder, like grab me on my shoulder like this. And I thought it was like my dad or my, my mom or something. And I quickly looked around because it freaks me out. Nothing was there. And I was like, oh my God, that's so weird. Like it freaked me out because I genuinely felt like a shoulder. Like it was, it wasn't scary. It was like a loving, like I got yeah. you kind of thing. And then I would always feel like a cold breeze. Like just a cold breeze would just like pass over me, but not in like a, way it was like just a like a hey mm-hmm. i'm here Dude, i way. need that i overheat like crazy <laughs> but like i and i don't know again i don't know whether it was my mind playing tricks on me i don't know whether it was just me thinking too much into things and there could have been a, an explanation for it but like i will never forget just like genuinely feeling like somebody was like doing this to my shoulder like just having their hand on my shoulder and then turning around and there absolutely being nothing and i was like no, I what fully, I fully believe in that. Yeah, like you know, but it was it's they, never like I've never had scary interactions with things. I've never been like, oh my god, like I think it, like it's always just been like, I put it down to like it could have been my great grandpa, like saying hey because I haven't had too many people in my life pass away. Like in my family, I've had 
um, my great grandpa, and then as of recently, one of my uncles just passed away. So like, mm-hmm. those are really the only two people in my life that I've been close to that have passed away. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I fully believe that like, I w- you know, we always talk about the paranormal being like this bad experience where like you're possessed by forty three demons or whatever. But no, like, I, I fully it believe be it can be good. You know, it's like my parents were are maybe still obsessed with like Long Island medium. Oh, you I know. Lo- that's beautiful. And like, yeah, it's like that. It's like beautiful that she is able to like exactly. connect fam, whether it's real or fake, whether you believe in it or you don't, it gives these people closure and comfort and exactly. knowing that like they could still say their goodbyes to people that maybe they didn't get to say their goodbyes to or that there is a way that you can still communicate. And I think it's, you know, some people say it's not healthy and that like help it forces these people to like not move on. But it I think it's like on how the people take it, though, in know, case by case basis. Do you think there's like, like, do you think there's tears to it? Like, it, it's like costs a little bit more if you want to talk to like Michael Jackson. <laughs> like, you want to talk? Well, no, you can't talk to them. What? You have well, to talk to like to people talk... that you have connections with. Yeah, so I it's got like... a pretty good connection. Smooth Criminal was my favorite song for a while. <laughs> <laughs> like Michael Jackson's kids could talk to him, or, or could like talk people to Michael that Jackson's he... kids. What he died of a drug overdose, didn't he? No. Yeah, um, kind of. The, His, the, the, yeah. the doctor gave him the wrong kind of medicine. But yeah, um, what was <laughs> I gonna say? I've had like a mixture of like the good and bad kind of like paranormal experiences. I think I've never gotten deep enough into it to get to the bad side of things. I feel, but the thing is, is like my like quote unquote like bad experiences aren't even like I wasn't even getting deep into it. It was just like so the house that I grew up in, like from like. Are you raising... Did you just raise your hand like we're in a classroom? Yes, Indy? Yes, Indy. I was just going to ask if I could get water while you were talking. Yeah, go get water. I don't know why I raise my hand. Sometimes I revert back to school days. Mr. Teacher. Sometimes I really just revert back to school days of just being like... That means you see Jared as an authoritative figure. I do not see you as an authoritative figure. Oh, Jared. I'm just going to be so honest. I just didn't want to interrupt you because I'm so sick of the comments being like, Can Indiana shut up? (laughs) No, it's a podcast, bitch. Say, no, but <gasps> Indiana's gone. She's a ghost. <laughs> oh, she's back. <laughs> no, I'm good. <gasps> Holy hell. I fully believe that, like, my house was, like, a little bit haunted just by, like, one person. It was me. Because, was it you? It was you. I would haunt the hell out of you. <laughs> if I died, haunt you every day, dude. <laughs> haunt you every day. Oh, uh, dude. Titty twisters at night. You'd be like, Zach. I'd be like, can't do anything, you know? No, anyway, so I think it was haunted by like one person. What was his name? I don't know. But I think it was the guy that lived there before because he he died at the house, oh, right? You knew it? You knew he died? Yeah, I knew he died. Wait, can, can, but the thing is, he died of like just natural causes, right? So it wasn't anything violent. Like it wasn't like a murder or a break in or a suicide or anything. So, like, you know, the technically the realtor like didn't have to disclose that but like my mom asked her about it anyway you mean she asked your mom just happened to ask if anyone had died in the, on the property yeah it's a very common you're question s- really you're, yeah it's yeah, yeah, extremely yeah. Yeah, yeah you're sexy sexy mom though right that's which, both which, of them whoops God. go ahead but when we when we get there right like i remember when we first went to go look at the house my mom like took pictures on her camera this was before like we had iphones or whatever go ahead and when she went to like look at the pictures on her computer um you know like uh how they always say like sometimes in pictures ghosts can like show up as like little orbs on the camera there was an orb in almost every single picture. Like it was kind of like following us around the house. Well, photo you know? bombing was big back then. So that makes Huge sense. Huge back then. So that, that was one thing that we noticed, right? The house just overall kind of had like a weird feel to it. Like it was like homey, but like something was just like a little bit off. And in the basement, um, there was a bathroom down there that was like, it was like finished, but unfinished. And, um, and then there's also a storage room, but both of them had... Uh, like deadbolt locks on the outside of the of the doors, right? The the kind of like in hotel rooms or whatever that like s- you slide up and slide over. It was on the outside. Why? We thought that was so w- weird. You know, we we're like, what is he trying to keep from getting out of these these rooms? You know. Guess what, guys? I can't see out of my eyeballs, but you know who's got me? Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores, offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, eye exams, contact lenses. Glasses start at $95, including prescriptions, Definitely sunglasses, my part. progressives, my part. and blue light lenses are also available. 
I decided to do the whole ad read because I wanted to. Oh. <laughs> you understand that? Okay, okay. I'll let I'll let it go. Do you guys mind if I try on a couple of these glasses? I actually, okay, so I actually did go online and I picked out five glasses. I've worn contacts my entire life. But so, so do I. Sucks. But I've never owned Same. a pair of glasses. You want to try those this on? This is not my try on, but I like these ones a lot. No, those one looks, no, I got some for you too. I feel pretty smart. Zach, so studious. Well, I'm a little nervous. A little bit of a Harry Potter vibe with these ones on me. No, oh, those definitely. go so well with your outfit. Oh, really? wait. I actually really, yeah, with like oh, really? the You kind look of like denim. you read for fun. That's the goal. And you can't even read, so that's the craziest part. <gasps> okay, how do we feel about these? Yeah, those are my favorite Whoa. on him. Oh, I love that. I feel like a little Peter Parker vibe. I just think it's crazy that these like start at $95 like That's with the prescription lenses crazy. because like growing up it would be like 400 bucks you guys should definitely try Warby Parker's free home try on program you can order five pairs of glasses to try on at home for free um for five days and there's already like prepaid shipping return and you don't even have to buy them if you don't find a pair that you like but I'm sure you will because so really try cute. five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash dropouts. That's warbyparker.com slash dropouts. We lived in that house for a bunch of years, and there were only like a few like notable experiences. Like there was one time I I was home by myself, just scrolling through Grinder. Shut up. <laughs> um, and I was in. I went to go to the bathroom, and I flipped on the light switch, and all of a sudden I heard just the loudest scream that said, it said, no. It was like, no. And then the light cut out. Well, dude, it's the worst when you just wake up and it's like, I don't want it bright in here. So that makes sense. God, I'm on the go side here. I, yeah, I can see that anyway. So, but I did that. The light cut out while the switch was still on. Right. So it's not like he switched it off. It just like, it just literally, he like the ghost shorted the bulbs. So he can control electric currents. This guy. Well, that's they, crafty. That's why when ghost hunters always like go searching for him, they u- always use his like electromagnetic readers <laughs> or whatever. Anyway, so that was one of the experiences. Um, the the our TVs, especially in the basement, um, our TVs, the treadmill that we had down there, and our radios would sometimes they would just kick on and start flipping through channels, you know, or like the treadmill would just start running itself, you know. Really weird, but like kind of benign stuff. But like, kind well, of it's creepy. a hot girl summer. The guys got the ghost has got to get in shape. You know, there's other ghosts oh out God. there. How do he's you been think dead for things? a while, so he's trying to figure out what type of music he likes now. I guess, yeah, that's one way to explain it. Um, so your ghost likes working out and doesn't like the lights on in the morning. He's not that bad of a guy. I didn't say it was the morning. It's, well, it just seems like you've got it out for this guy, and like he was there first. He didn't want to die there. Oh, and now you just move in? Well, that's kind of what houses Maybe you're the do. What if you're the ghost of his parallel universe? Maybe. But then, like, the other weird thing is, like, you would just always hear, whether you were home alone or not or whatever, you would always just hear, we had hardwood floors, like, really creaky ones that you would always just hear somebody walking around, especially if, like, if I was home alone. He's and told me that before. Yeah. And you it, like, just hear people walking around in your Dude, house. it was the weirdest thing. Like, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. Like, I vividly remember one time I was playing, like, Xbox with my friends downstairs. Oh, you were by uh, yourself. Go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, Xbox Live. Like, I was by myself, <laughs> but playing with my friends on Xbox Live. And, um, okay. and all of a sudden, like, I just hear footsteps walking. And I was like, oh, my parents are home. So, like, I just paused again. I, like, went upstairs. Yo, April. And no one was there. Hey, bro. <laughs> Were you scared? Yeah. Did you go I back to the basement? Yeah. Why would you go back to the basement? I feel like that's the most scary zone. Well, because. Were you like, yo, boys, <laughs> turn off COD. Something's crazy going on over here, Well, dude. the basement was, like, kind of finished. And so, and gotcha. plus, like, the TV was on down there. And I just, like, felt like, and plus, I like, I was talking to my friends. So See, I every was, time I hit basement, I just think of American Horror Story Murder House basement. That's a bad basement. That's a bad basement. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bad vibes. Bad vibes, bro. You know, those are, like my really like only negative experiences you know but um like i've had i've had a lot of really positive ones especially with like my grandfather all right give me the speed round okay speed round so basically um god i gotta (laughs) speed round (laughs) speed round i will i'm trying to think because like i kind of gotta go like way far back right so okay speed round uh my mom's gay Right, my grandma. Okay, weird speed round. Weird <laughs> okay. way to start the speed round. Okay, hold on, hold on. No, but so I ha- she I, was on grind. I have to start. My bad. I have to start way back. My mom's gay. My grandma's super Catholic. Um, 
my mom got pregnant through artificial insemination. My, Hot. my grandma thought that was an abomination. And she told my mom, she's like, I never want to lay eyes on that child. My mom gives well, birth. F- no right? one does now, but reluctantly, my mom takes me to go see her and my grandma would not put me down. She said, Julie, I don't know what it is about this one, but this one has stolen my heart. Right. Aww. So it starts when I was born and then I grew up. And then a few years later, we're at like a family reunion at my cousin's house and they have a bunch of land, right? Like, a, like, in Where the a girl woods. cousin. Well, there's three of them. So two girls, one boy. How hard are the girls? Shut up. Um, anyway, so we're at like a family, like, reunion gathering whatever there and we're playing outside in their backyard and I look to the tree line and all of a sudden I just see a, like a man kind of standing there in a suit and like I, I make eye contact with him did he have a hat on no he didn't have okay. a hat on Could have been so good. he kind of like he smiles and then he like walks behind a tree and just like disappears and like I run after to go like find him look behind a tree he's gone how old are you somewhere between four and six okay that's a local pervert but that's not a guess but the, the thing is okay i was too young to know at that, that point it was a local pervert yeah oh jared no i go to look and he's not there like he's not anywhere like he walks behind the tree and he's gone how are we gonna tell him you weren't cute enough a kid to take shut <laughs> up anyway so then um uh, a few years later i'm in um i'm Orange. in seventh grade and my school is like, uh, so like I'm, I'm in school, I'm in English class and we're, I'm, I'm in class and I sat at the front corner of the desk, right. Or of the room. Right. So I had a perfect view of the door, like outside, you know, all of a sudden I see the same man in the suit walk down the hallway and he looks at me and he smiles and he walks out the door and I literally get up. I'm like, I'm going to the bathroom. I get up and I run out and I follow him out the door gone again i was like what the hell is happening he was looking to see if your looks improved why would because he wants to take a cute kid home to diddle them okay thank you indy anyway so i go out follow him and i'm freaked out i'm like why i've seen this man before and then um could you did you immediately put two and two together or you just thought that he looked familiar no i immediately put two like i saw him and i was like this dude looks familiar and then like i all of a sudden had that like Jimmy Neutron flashback or whatever, you know? And, uh, so then I, my grandma moves into the, the little condo that she's in now and, um, we're helping her like, you know, like hang stuff or whatever. And all of a sudden she has like pictures from her wedding day, you know, and there's fuck my camera. So my grandma has this like frame from her wedding day and it has like her marriage certificate, a picture of her and my grandfather. Um, and I'm like, all of a sudden it clicks in my head. Right. And I'm like, uh, I think I'm 14 at this point. So I'm in like eighth grade. So this is like a year later. And, uh, I'm like, Oh my God, that's the guy that I've seen. Like, that's the man in the suit. And like, my mom's like, what? And I was like, do you remember like me telling you about this? Blah, blah, blah. And so told her about that. And she's like, Oh, that's crazy. You know? Oh. And then I forgot what the hell I totally forgot to mention in between, um, me seeing him at the 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 first family event right and like when i was and when i was born um when i was like two or three i was in the back of my mom's car she's driving and she has a story that she loves telling and she's like i was talking to myself right my mom looks in her rear view mirror she's like jared who are you talking to and i'm like oh i'm just talking to grandpa and she gets freaked out because my grandpa passed away when my mom was two and she was like your mom was jealous uh, (laughs) and she was like what what is he saying and i was like oh he's just saying he loves me you know, and she was like, she's freaked out. She's like, oh, that's really sweet. Anyway, so I see my grandma's like marriage certificate. I was like, oh, that's the man in the suit, you know, whatever. And then um, I'm 16 and my grandma sits me down. She has like a very serious conversation with me. And she's like, Jared, um, she's like, I don't know what it is. She tells me the same story of like when she first like held me as a baby. She's like, I don't know what it is, but seeing the man that like you've grown into uh, now She's like, you remind me so much of your grandfather. I've had. And, well, you right? guys are both smiling all the time. Yeah, I mean, he was known as like a really. So he's in a guy. suit. What? He's in a suit. He's in a suit because like the, and yours the was wedding in a suit? photo. This is what I don't get. Is there like a Norsham rack in Ghost World, or like, <laughs> or wouldn't they be naked? That's no. why I think it's our projections of them because, um, like maybe they. I think if they don't, ha- they wouldn't have clothes. Okay, whatever. Okay. Anyway. Oh, but so, Zach's the crazy one. But, and then, like, once I started, like, learning more about this stuff, like, the paranormal and, like, the universal, like, eth- ethereal side of the world, you know. Nice word. Um, I started learning about the number 11. And the number 11 would show up every time, like, in a time of need and a time of stress and a time of happiness, whatever. Confirmation I asked, bias. We're going. Zach. <laughs> Anyway, I asked my mom, I was like, do you ever just see like a random number or like a number 
that shows up a lot. And she's like, she's like, oh yeah, I see the number 11 all the time. Right. And so like, we both had that in common before I had even talked to her about it. And I was like, she was like, oh, I always say that that's grandpa. You know, that's what my mom said. And so then I started relating it to him and it made a lot of sense, you know? Um, but anyway, and then like, I've had a physical experience where I was at like this retreat and I was crossing, I've told the story before, but I was crossing a street. It was dark. It's, you know, there's no, uh, lamps or anything. And, um, a car was coming up without its headlights on and I had a backpack and, uh, I wasn't paying attention. And as soon as I take one step in the street, something grabs my backpack and literally yanks me off my feet. And like, I land flat on my ass and there's nobody around and the car like goes by like 40 miles an hour. Crazy. So like, I truly believe that my grandfather is like my guardian angel, like looking out for me. If I was there, dude, I would have pulled you right in front of it. <laughs> I mean, your grandpa would have had a tug of war. <laughs> no. Zach, I truly believe you're the devil on my shoulder. The, okay. This is not to bring it into like gross things, but if then don't. An- ancestors like watch over us, like, do you think they like, when we're like, get physical with someone do you think they like tune out like i hope oh 100 i think they have like selective but like do they know what's happening it's why like, do you have to bring it that way but here's the thing no those are genuine here's questions the they have i think about that all the time thank you why would you not think about that if if they're there in like the weird moments like i don't want them to be there in like it's like dude it's yeah. like okay i've been eating a lot this week i know i'm naked right now i know i can improve a little bit you think they I judge just, us like uh you kind of gained a little weight i don't want like like my friend rob right that passed away it's like listen I bet he's proud of me that I'm getting some. Ew. I don't want him to watch. Though. No, only Have I can watch. Have you ever had any experiences with him? Yeah, actually, I was going to bring that up. Um, so I haven't had anything like crazy or like I, I haven't had a lot of things with him, but I've had one thing that I thought was really crazy. Um, and so he committed suicide uh, when we were 17. And, um, and I remember on the, the first, I'll, I'll pull up the picture actually on the, the first anniversary of his death, um, June 23rd, he, or I, I walk outside and the sky or like literally the entire open air is this like undeniable pink color, you know, like a, a pink that I've never seen like spread out. And it, it wasn't sunset or anything. It was probably like three o'clock in the afternoon, you know. Was he at your birthday party like a couple of days earlier? Yeah. Yeah. That's so sad. he he passed away um, June 23rd and my birthday is June 20th. 20th. And so, yeah, he and then he also I mean, he got me this necklace. That was on your birthday? Yeah. The three days earlier? Mm-hmm. Very so I, I've always Very worn that. I have a tattoo um of his initials on my chest but here i'll pull up the the picture because it's kind of i and like this picture has no editing straight off of my like iphone 5s or whatever i had at the time but yeah it was just this like undeniable pink that like you know encompassed the entire like cincinnati area um which i thought was like kind of amazing i kind of took that i was like okay are you, you putting, know, it, you're putting was, it on tv yeah i'm gonna okay. put it on the tv because i was like it was it was the anniversary of his death and this was like you know it had been a year and it was probably like one of the like most difficult like years i've had this is the picture wow. like straight off of the phone no it's editing just, i thought the sky was pink but it's pink everywhere it's pink everywhere is that your solera right there that is Old faithful right there. Oh, <laughs> we've done some damage in that bad boy. <laughs> but yeah, I just Beautiful. thought it was like, it was crazy. It was just like. Your street's eerie. Oh yeah, you got a scary street. Yeah. <laughs> you got like, an absolutely like, terrifying street. It's like weirdly homey and absolutely looks like horror films were shot on your street. Yeah. Yeah. You should see the house that I lived in too. Um, Cause it was kind of like old, like. 1800 Big style houses, yeah this is uh Jared hyde park since no this is when i lived with a family friend oh. this is hyde park cincinnati if anybody's Jared's familiar with got money. It. that's where, like really like the only experience i've had with that but it just kind of like i would ask know. Zach to the left if he's ever had any experiences <laughs> with anything but yes <laughs> have you yeah totally let's hear it okay so, i don't want to follow your sad story with jokes though <laughs> it's okay it's a podcast that's what we do okay um healthy transition put a little graphic on here that says healthy transition um so one time i was at my local mcdonald's and um i wish you could just see me rolling my eyes right now but unfortunately my camera's cut okay i gave everyone their chance to tell their stories 
but I'm not. Yeah, but you're bullshitting. Oh, okay. Well, then I won't tell my story. Okay. It was a good one. What's it involved a, a clown <laughs> who they use for marketing. Just about to say that. Do you guys believe in any sort of like re well I, leprechauns? In the, in yes. The, do you believe in any sort of reincarnation or uh, um, or multiple lives? I don't know how I feel about that. I don't okay. know because I think the whole like you have multiple lives and you learn things in each of those lives for the one that you're in, right? But you have no memory and no <laughs> like you have nothing from your previous lives. So how the you meant to learn something. But what if you what if you do? What if subconsciously what if, or, or subconsciously that's what deja vu is? Or? That's what like um you know, that's what affects your personality in this life. Right? So like say my soul has learned a lot about like love and kindness or whatever, right? Because that's the hell did her what people soul learn. Well, hold on. Okay. So has learned a lot about love and kindness, but in this life also needs to learn about like strength and standing up for yourself, right? Because I feel like that's mm-hmm. something that I don't do enough. And what the hell my soul learn? Well, I feel like your soul learn <laughs> how learn that strength and like learning to stand up for yourself. I'll learn how the. F- to be heartbroken in too many lifetimes. <laughs> I, but I think that's something that's common in every lifetime. It's for those TikTok boys are too hot. You can't do anything about it. Ah, look at those abs. My last boyfriend did not have abs and was not that good looking. Got us. <laughs> Boy, did you get us. <laughs> um, was it the personality that made you stay? Go ahead. But so <laughs> Yeah, I anyway. know what it was, man. Anyway, none of them. So I think like your soul has learned that strength and learned to stand up for yourself and learned that, you know, that side of things. But maybe like, you know, and we've worked on this a lot is like, um, you know, learning forgiveness and understanding and stuff empathy. like that and empathy where like, you know, you don't like when you get stressed or angry or something, you don't snap on somebody and like slit their throat you know like i, I like the words think, i like to think this was all a big ruse just to tell her that there's like because jared doesn't want to stand up for himself he's like i kind of want to tell her to stop snapping at me but i'm gonna come up with this whole thing and then he just like snapped sl- at you guys in forever no because i think like i think well, especially w- not you we like we've talked to you like we've sat down and been like listen we're words two people hurt. well yeah <laughs> basically hurt. but like we're like listen we're two people that legitimately want nothing but the best for you and care like on what, what's the word I'm looking for? Conditional. Unconditionally for you, you know? And so it's like, we would never do anything to intentionally hurt you. So like when like you had those moments where you snapped at us, you know, it's like those did hurt because and we didn't like, understand why. Yeah. But it's like, we've come a long way from that, you know? And I think that's like something that like you were meant to learn in this life. You know, I agree. And so, just like like I said, like I'm meant to probably learn strength and standing up for myself. What do you think Zach, Zach's meant to learn in this. Life? I think Zach is meant to learn how to. Um, what's how do I say this? Like, be <sighs> how to not cover all of his sadness with humor? yeah. Like, be expressive and I am expressive. No. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) no (laughs) like be expressive and like you are empathetic but also uh not not what i'm looking for try to be sexier no uh what i mean covers his pain with humor yeah what if (laughs) i just don't have any pain i think no if i I only have humor no i think you have pain and are using this as a defense mechanism um but like i so much pain i think also like learning thank you uh (laughs) learning to work with people right because I feel like mm-hmm. your your brain um, works alone. Work, yeah, it works alone. And like, I can't trust anybody. If I ask me to do something, they never do it. You know how frustrating it is. Yeah, I get that. But like, I feel like you're learning patience and learning how to okay. deal with that. So I went to a personality class. Um, I've told you guys this before. This you went guy. To a personality class. It's like it's like an acting class to see who you um, naturally portray to the world, like who you are as a person. Huh. And it was very interesting. The teacher, That's super interesting. the teacher loved him. They still teach the course, but he died recently. He was the casting director for MASH. Um, wow. Yeah. Aww. Super cool guy. I did in Atlanta, but um, he said, I've been doing this for 30 years. You're the most withheld person I've ever met in my entire life. <laughs> 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 he just straight up told me that. And I said, yeah. He, he went, thanks, dude. <laughs> he said, but he's like, I've been doing, he's like, there's actual science to this. Like, like he 
shows like people's personality. He's like, but that means that there's also an opposite to you. So you're the most withheld. But when there's something that needs to be done or like a project, you're the most contributing. Like oh, you'll do it that. all. Like you'll do it all because you just want to get it done the right way. Mm-hmm. But you also won't tell any. Like you won't tell anybody anything. But if it's like something you want to work on, you'll do it all. Exactly. And I think I think you're he went, here. I've been doing this thirty years. <laughs> no, he's like, yeah, I've been doing this thirty years, and you're the most withheld person I've ever met. <laughs> like you <laughs> have the so most wall up than anyone I've ever met. And I've been doing this my whole life, and I specialize in it. And I said, "Sick, dude." That's so funny to me. It is what it is. But yeah, and see, so yeah, I think that's why you're sexy. You're, no, you're meant see? to learn. <laughs> you just have you do have a huge wall. Huge. Thanks. That's that's why I thought it was interesting. Anyway, we'll get into fan questions. Here we go. Hi, guys. So Hello. I have a question about arguments. I tend to be very closed off after an argument or a confrontation. Um, when I'm really mad at someone, I can't see straight. I can't think straight. And so I stop communicating, and I just can't get words out. And I feel like even when I try like to like push myself to have that conversation face-to-face uh, to work things out, I physically like can't work up the pride or the power to say sorry and I feel like that's an issue with communication on my part and I was just wondering how you guys deal with that. Also, I am 10% team whole milk, 30% team Indiana and 60% team Zach. Zach, I literally love you. Zach who? You're like <laughs> The joke literally, is so I love old you. now, Zach. <laughs> I, it's so old. She's in love with me though. So can we at least that's say sweet. thank you? I love you too. Um I half love you because you only like. Well, that's more than her percent of you. I know, because I love uh, you. You're more. a giver. I am. Um, I have that thing. I shut down when like I get mad at people. I can't communicate with people. I like don't think straight. I don't see straight. And then when like it comes to the time where I have to apologize or I need to like confront the situation, I just like don't. I just like let it go. And I'm like, let's put this under the rug. And just like never talk about it again. And that's and how can we improve? Well, that's her that's question. Why you two are here? No, but I feel like you've gotten better. Um, yeah, that's why I, I actually this have question gotten up. better. Yeah, I think it's just about like recognizing in the moment that you're in a state of mind that like you need to fix. Meaning that like when I get super stressed out or like angry or just like I can't deal with things, I know that like I have to take a second. Personally, I know that I have to like genuinely take a second and be like, okay, Indiana think this through logically and think about the facts think about what you're doing think about what you're gonna say because in the long run it's gonna hurt people and it took it took me a very like literally my whole life to be able to like do that but like and I'm still not perfect at it like I'll admit but like I think it's just about it's just about like repetition and having those people around you that are like that will hold you accountable like when you're in those situations they'll hold you accountable for being like you're not thinking straight you're not seeing straight sit down take a deep breath and like calm down and let's figure this out like like responsible adults are like let's have a conversation versus just like you not seeing straight thinking straight and then just walking out and letting it go like that's just honestly about having the right people around you and telling them and if you don't if they're not like um if they don't hold you accountable for it being like hey guys when you're in a better state of mind being like hey guys when I feel that way I can't control myself but I want to be able to so I need your guy I need your help to help me get there I need you to in those moments look at me and be like I need you to think about this logically think about what you're gonna say and like but even do it to yourself like something I found super super uh, helpful is like in my notes section sometimes it's really it almost seems psychotic but I'll write down the argument like weirdly like I'll write down previous arguments I've had and look at it and be like okay that's not right this is clearly gonna hurt somebody and then I'll rewrite the argument in a way that I could do it not hurt people and get out my facts and get out my logic clearly and so it's like clearly and just like without it hurting people and then I'm like okay here's where I went wrong here's where I can fix that next time I'm in a situation like this this is what I'm gonna do nice beautiful come that along is a- we've come a long way come come a long, long way. way she used to just blaze fire upon everyone yeah, I was Lucifer pouring hell into the into the world. But not anymore. I'm not only any- like a little bit Lucifer, which I, is like, OK, sometimes you need that. I think I just take a step back and be like, will this matter at all a year from now? Will this matter at all a week from now? And however long I can dilute it to, like if it actually matters, it could matter a year from now. I'll be more serious about it. But I'm like, if this is just like a dumb little argument that won't matter in probably five minutes, 
then I just want to talk it about it. These are my feelings. These are your feelings. Let's come to a compromise. I understand that you're feeling this way. I'm sorry about that. This is how I'm feeling. This is why I feel this way. You explain it to me. I feel like we can come to a common ground pretty easily and then move on. And like, if I'm at fault, I will say sorry because I didn't mean to hurt you. I don't have bad intent. I think intention is like the most important thing to realize. If a person has bad intent, then yes, you have a reason to be mad at them. And yes, you have a reason to be like, you're, you suck. F*** you kind of thing. But if you look down to the base of the argument and you're like, this is what we're arguing, arguing about. Does this person have good intention? Yes. Okay. (laughs) Argument solved. They made a mistake. Talk this out. Say what you didn't like. And then that's it. Like, I still have kind of an issue with that. Like, not about like, um, realizing someone's intentions it's about like I like a lot of the time when I'm in arguments I know I need to take a step back and like I need time to myself to really process my emotions and my feelings and some like you don't work that way like whenever Zach and I have had an argument like he wants to deal with it then and there right then and I I know for myself like so I don't absolutely rain hellfire on people I know I need to take like 10-15 minutes to myself and just think straight and think clearly and take a deep breath and just like you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think it's just about like coming to a compromise with the people that you're around and like, yeah. Say so retweet Jared next one. Retweet next one. Hey dropouts. Uh, my name is Taylor and I just want to know um, if y'all had to go to college and you couldn't pursue what you are doing now, uh, what would y'all major in? I'm majoring in criminal justice this fall. I think <sighs> oh, so First of all, I didn't commit so a crime. I'm so excited for that. Criminal but justice. also, um, <laughs> 40% team Indy, 30% Aww. team Zach, 30% team Whole Milk. Thank you. Bye, guys. What? what? Okay. That's really cool. Nah, I'm a dropout. So. Nah, I'm a dropout. Oh, you have to. That's you the question. That's I didn't. Question. I didn't actually drop out, but I'm like kind of a dropout. So, no, I didn't go to college. But if I had to go to t- college, what would I study? Yeah. Is that what she was asking? Yeah. Um. Like, honestly, like, probably criminal justice. Like, I always wanted to do something like that. Like, to do with law. I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, oh, I really, for a very long time there, I wanted to be a forensic scientist. Super long time. I could be. So. Were you big on like the forensic files? Like, oh my, TV? yeah, I'm still big on it. I loved that show. Dude, I used to DVR that shit at night and watch it before I went to school in the morning. Dude, we can 100% binge watch that if you want. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm so obsessed down. with shows like that. And like, um, but I'm also super obsessed with like, I hate when people say I'm lying or I hate when others are accused of, of lying. Cause I know how pissed off I get. And so it's like, I always want to like help. Sometimes I would, I would want to help the accused. Like I'd be, I think that's, um, criminal defense. Yeah. I'd want to do criminal defense because, um, that's what, uh, one of my like hometown friends, parents. I does. mean, it's, it's a really fine line because you meet a lot of shitty people that have done a lot of shitty things, yeah. but also you can help a lot of innocent people from spending life in jail. So, Zach, what about you? I was going to school for entrepreneurship, so I probably would just go back into that. You know what I mean? I feel like you'd follow in, like, your brother's footsteps and, like, start your own businesses and stuff like that. You're you're in school for business, weren't you? Yeah. Just like any other white male. That's accurate. Go ahead, Jared. Um, I've always said that if I couldn't get into, um, like, any, like, media school, I would have gone into neuroscience. Like, I, I'm fascinated wow. by the human brain and how that works. I wanted everything. to do that for a while, and then I was like, no, I don't got the grace for that. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I was like, let's be realistic here, Indiana. You don't want to spend 10 years in med school. Yeah. Let's go. That was, uh, it was just like, I like, when I took psychology, you know, like, that was kind of like super the, interesting. that was kind of like the introduction to it. And um, on the contrary, what every white girl goes to college for. It's not that it's not interesting. It's just every single person on earth gets it. So yeah. it's like so oversaturated and there's not much you can do with it. Well, That's I, why you have to go to extra years. and then Yeah, I would have specifically gone into neuroscience, like actually working like with the brain and not just like psychology where it's so broad, you know, and like. I think, yeah. I think the brain's yeah. very interesting and like yeah. figuring out the way that like, because everyone's or work completely differently. Mm -hmm. So to see how somebody else's could work and like if something else is truly like affecting them chemically in their brain to be like, this is why you're reacting like this and this is what you need to do to fix that. Well, that's it for the questions, but I I do have some memes. (laughs) Someone made this from last week's podcast. Uh, I thought this was funny. 
So it's a <laughs> statue. <laughs> of it's like a pinup drawing That's of the Statue funny. of Liberty, and then uh, I prefer her cloaked. But the mask. The the mask. Yeah, Zach. I want my imagination to do the work. That's why I like none so much. You That's never funny. know what's under it the robe. I haven't seen the mask. Uh, That's a great. Well, I like the movie. It's like a fun like. What, when you take it for what it is. A like, lot of the great movies that people say are so great do not hold up. I and it's that, okay to say that. You know what I feel that about? Star Wars. Yeah. Ooh, like that's the, bold. No, a lot listen, of them I grew up. I grew up like I like Star, Star Wars, Wars, but I can see why you wouldn't. But yeah, well, it's just like I went back and I rewatched the movies after I had like gone through film school and like actually mm. learned how to analyze movies like critically. And I was like, oh, man, but back then those is... were like the first of its time. Like after watching the Spielberg documentary, it went into the Star Wars, doc- uh, went into the Star Wars series a little bit because one of Spielberg's friends, George Lucas, mm-hmm, <laughs> they were friends in the early days when they were creating Star Wars. A lot of what they were doing in Star Wars was like the first of its kind. Like oh, a yeah. lot of the special effects were like had never been done before. And Honestly, the animated show of Star Wars um, is the it the Clone, Clone Wars? Wars? Is, I like it it's so much amazing. better than than <laughs> any of the movies. Yeah, and then Indy, this is uh, Anna. Shut up! <laughs> I Just hate that. Respect joke. my co-host. Uh, <laughs> this is f- someone sent this in for you. Um, <laughs> it's a tweet, and it says. Small boobs? <laughs> That's why your heart gets so easy. No airbags to support the damage. Yeah. That makes sense. Anyway. Why not uh, wear extra layers? All today. right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Okay? If you watch to the end of this, make sure to DM Zach. Tell him what to DM me. That Hero Mode comes out this June. That's what I'm going to DM you. Okay. Hero Mode's <laughs> a movie. Comes out June. It's Indiana's really cool. in a movie, allegedly. I'm very excited about it. Um, and that's it. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this week episode of Dropout. I'm Indiana. That's Zach Justice. Allegedly. That's Jerry Brand Music. Make sure to go follow us on Instagram at Dropouts Pod. Buy my little swag, Wait, daddies. Remember to send us stuff at our P.O. box. Oh yeah. It's Here's on the, the screen address. right now. Movie Bye. Bye. <laughs>